Welcome to 4th Down Magazine's Bracket Breakdown. I'm Adam Kulikowski. I'll be firing the questions at our expert, Andy Shea. Welcome, Andy. Hey, Adam. District 3 playoff time. Let's oh. look at some brackets and I, talk about it. I love it. I love it. We wait 10 weeks, Andy, for this to happen. It's here. It's playoff time. It's time to see who's going to go win some district championships, win a state title. Andy, let's, let's get into it. Let's go. I, I'm just curious, you know, the bracket came out officially, officially from District 3 on Monday. Andy, any surprises in who didn't make the cut? Yeah, the, the Central Dolphin, right? Five and three Rams missed two games with COVID. Um, they have a good opponent's winning percentage. They lost their last two games of the regular season. They, they had good numbers, but six and four Mannheim Township had just a little bit better opponent's yeah. winning percentage had more meat on the bone and they edged them out for the eight spot. That's, I mean, no, no central dolphin and no Cumberland Valley Yeah. in the same year in, in six A and big school playoffs. That is when, highly, highly unusual. When's the last time that even happened? I can't even think about in all the coverage that we've done over the years when both. Yeah, those I, I don't, I'm not sure. I recall. I, I don't recall when both teams, even when they were four teams, in the bracket, you know what I mean? Like it was yeah. a, you know, when it was old, the old four A before the six classifications, and it was, it was four, it was a fourteen bracket. He could almost count on one of those two making it. So the fact that both of them were out in the same year, highly irregular, is the yeah. way I'll put it. We're gonna put uh, our stat expert, Mrs. Fourth Down, on that fact. We're gonna get that oh. out there, and put it on Twitter, see if she could find, dig dig out that one and find out when the last year that neither of those two teams made the district playoffs. Yeah, I know where to go find it, but uh, put, put Mrs. Fourth down on it to go find it. I could find it, but she's better at it. She loves a good challenge. We'll see if she could find it. But Andy, let's, let's talk about who did make the 6A uh, brackets sure. in, in District 3. Yeah. You know, one game that we talked a little bit about that stood out, number seven, Carlisle at number two, Harrisburg. That's Saturday right. at Severance Field. That first first game that they matched hate up it. with earlier this 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 year, we hate it. Four or five. Hate this hate this matchup, Adam. Absolutely hate it. Um, like Carlisle being a playoff team, like how they had to work to get in. Hate that they have to play the Cougars again. Yeah. Hate it. I'd, I'd rather have seen them played a, anybody else in this bracket. Um, it's just even playing CD East again. Although that would have been a little more anticlimactic, <laughs> but it would have been interesting to see them play back to back weeks. It's I didn't want them to play Harrisburg. I just play Central York, play anybody else. I hate that game, not because of the Cougars or anything to do with them. Don't get me wrong. I just, and it's not because it's two mid pin teams. I don't care about that. Yeah. It's just, I just didn't want to see this game again right out of the shoot. And that one grabs me as like, oh man, come on, anybody else. But hey, here it is. It was a mismatch the first time around. Carlisle's a different team. Harrisburg is not, but. I don't know. It's a, it's one of those 60, 40 games for me again. I yeah. mean, but Harrisburg did thump them pretty good the first time around. They're different. The thundering herd are different, but are they different enough? That's the question. Is, so, is, hate the, the is, game. There, is there one thing about Carlisle? You, you mentioned that they're different. One thing that sticks out to you that they've improved or that they've adjusted or grown as the season has progressed. Well, they, they, they became, they believe is the first part of it, right? Like now they believe Matters. they can play with these teams. That's, that's one Two, their defenses has, has progressed along over the course of the season that it's become something that needed worked on to was getting better to is now helping them. Right. And that was really important. They, they always, they had to fit the pieces in, in terms of the quarterback running back and how they use all their athletes. They have plenty of them. They figured that out pretty early on. So it was always about closing the gap to be more complimentary football wise. Yeah. Plus the confidence factor was just huge for them. Huge, huge. Any number one seed central York, anybody in district six, right. Or in six, a right now in district three that can contend with them for the district championship. Oh, absolutely. I, I don't think they're a, a given by any stretch of the imagination. I'm, I'm serious. I think, I think you can, I think you can go fairly deep down. Don't, you know, 
don't sleep on Wilson. They always get better. They're the fifth seed. I don't think this is a, I don't see a favorite. I really don't. I, I think it's a box of chocolates bracket for sure. For just in my opinion, I mean, could Harrisburg win it? Yeah. yeah. Could CD East win it? Would that surprise you? No. Central York winning it. Could they? Yeah. Would it be surprising? No. So yeah. it's not that I'm being wishy-washy. It's just, I don't see a clear cut, you know, team to beat in this bracket. And I, it just, by the same token, it wouldn't surprise me if, if Carlisle beat Harrisburg, that doesn't, wouldn't surprise me either. Now, if Manheim Township beat Central York, that's a surprise. But you have to be, you know, it's a little bit of a tricky. So it is a box of chocolate 6A for me all the way. Yeah, I, I am going to struggle to pick these games week to week. Yeah. If Andy, you have to shake your, your magic eight ball right now. Who, who comes out as the, the district championship in 6 Oh, that's. Got to ask. Got to ask. That's tough, tough question. at the beginning. Um, because of the quarterback position, I would ride Bo Propula as far as he takes you. That that's simply it. That he's the best quarterback in the. He's by far. It is a and it is a big gap too. We both know that, right? Like he is so far ahead of any of the other seven quarterbacks in this bracket. It's the most important position on the field. It matters that much. I, I'm not going to bet against him. So that would be my reasoning. And can a team shut him down? That's the question. Could it happen? Absolutely. But if you're just Give, telling me to pick somebody and give me a reason it's the quarterback position yeah. and it's him yeah major x factor um uh, we we broke down hemfield at, at cd east and our uh showed the preview i'll check that out on fourthdownmagazine.com but andy let's jump yeah. down to 5a and talk a little bit about uh, some of the matchups there um what sticks out to you there um lord often obviously plays cedar cliff new oxford places number three shippensburg any any games there that really you know kind of kind of Get your, get your excited a little bit for Friday night? Well, what I'll say about 5A is with the matchups, right, and the way they're set up with, you know, Shippensburg and Waynesboro and who they're playing and Cedar Cliff and Lower Dolphin playing each other, right? Like, that's a guarantee. It kind of feels like me the expectation is that there should be three mid-pen teams moving on into the second round, right? That's – I'm just going to put it that way. Um, ultimately. I think they get at least two. Uh, if if only the winner of the uh, Lower Dolphin Cedar Cliff um, game advances out of this bracket based on the matchups and the first round matchups, it's an indictment on the conference of, in 2021. Mm. That's the way I'll put it. Like if only the mid pen versus mid pen is the only team to make it into the into the second round, that's an indictment on the conference. That means ooh, not good football. Um, I think it's a little, I, I, my expectation is, I think, I think there's three winnable games, you know, obviously one's a mid pen, mid pen. The other two are eminently winnable games for Waynesboro and Shippensburg. They have to play well, but I think they're uh, very winnable games. Yep. I thought the Daniel Boone game uh, at Waynesboro was really intriguing. Andy, what does Waynesboro have to do to, to, to advance there? So they kind of make, uh, I think they kind of turn, um, I think they kind of like, put a game on the edge and turn it into a little bit of a chaotic affair. And I think that's what they do. I think they're a, a, a I think they're a strong favorite because I think they're a little better than we think. And I think their record proves that. So I, I think that it's their game to lose, to be honest with you. That's the way I'm going to put it. Okay. And, then Andy and really nothing in 5A matters because it's Governor Mifflin, a cliff, and then these other 13 teams. And I know Mannheim Central is 9-1, and one and they have all this pedigree and everything. Trust me, this, the gap between Governor Mifflin and the other 13 teams is like six super Walmarts wide. It is so big. That's not kicking me, saying anything about anybody else. That is my testament to how precise, strong, and talented, and good at what they do, Governor Mifflin is. Okay, I'll change my question because I was going to ask you who would claim the district – District 3, 5A championship. Who's playing them in the championship matchup, Andy, out of this group? Oh, it, it's going to be Mannheim Central. If it's anybody else, it's a monster upset. Anybody else is a monster upset. Okay. Uh, let's jump down, down to 4A. Um, this has two play-in games. 
Uh, Andy, one of the playoff games, Big Spring, Conrad Weiser, uh, the other, Okura and Northern York. Andy, what sticks out to you in these, these first two games? That is Octorera. <laughs> the, 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 what sticks out to me is, can the mid-pen, you know, make it so? I think, honestly, between the two matchups, I think Big Spring has the much tougher matchup. I really do. I think seven and three Conrad Riser is a much more difficult opponent than eight and two Octorera that Northern's going to place. I mean, Northern's a sort of a, they're up, they're, they're a, I have no idea what to expect from them in the playoffs because it's so, they're so volatile when it comes to the playoffs. So their game's a 50 50 game to me. I think Big Spring's going to really have to play well to beat Wiser, but there's some elements of Wiser's defense that I think Big Spring can exploit but they clearly have the tougher matchup. Yep. And Andy, we touched more on, on the big spring Conrad Weiser game on our preview show. Yep. Again, check that out on fourth down magazine.com. And we'll have plenty more content on 4A as we do this again next week. And we look at um, some of the other matchups in 4A as, as the rest of the slate gets, gets going. Uh, let's jump down to 3A, Andy. Um, what sticks out to you in, in, this, uh, in this field? So what sticks out to me is that what I thought was a two-team race at the beginning of the year between Boiling Springs and why I'm missing has really kind of evolved into why I'm missing getting bigger, better, stronger, faster, and much, much, much better over the course of the regular season, which they haven't done that in a couple of years, right? They knew what they had, like right from the first quarter, they were like, Oh man, are they a handful? And I think this year they developed more into a handful. Whereas, I think Boiling Springs is better prepared to play a game against them, but I don't know if they have enough elements to actually play against them. Cause I think it looks more like the why I'm missing of last year than you thought it would at the beginning of the season. In other words, I think why I'm missing on many fronts has separated itself and created a, uh, just, they're just too good for anybody else in triple a Spartans are a machine. They, they, they just, and they developed into one this year. They yes. really, really have after they lost so much from that state championship, you know, st- the team that made it to the state final last year, right? They lost so many pieces and you knew they had all these new pieces and look at how the new pieces developed. And it, it's probably 85 to 90% of the impact and power and overall like pop that that team had last year with a bunch of new dudes scary yeah andy as you look at that field any any upsets any lower seeds that that could advance no i i don't see any and i don't think saying middletown beating west perry is the five and west perry being the four that's not an upset the upset for me in that game is if west perry actually wins Mm -hmm. um middletown's just playing at a different level right now they're playing their best football and they know how to handle this yep and again we broke that game down as well on our our show, the preview. So check that out again on fourthdownmagazine.com. Let's jump down to two A. There's two two games on the slate for Friday, November fifth. Number four, Susquehanna against number one, York Catholic, and number three, Upper Dolphin against number two, Columbia. Andy, we talked a little bit about the Upper Dolphin game. That that's a winnable game for Upper Dolphin. Yes, it is. Uh, it, it's a it's going to be a crazy game. I swear to God, that game is going to be off the hook crazy. Both of these teams are high wire acts. They. Columbia throws it. They have a great quarterback and throw it all over the lot. Yep. Upper Dolphins got like seven dudes that run the ball every game and they just spread the ball around and figure out ways to find gaps and seams and just carve you up. Right. It's two different styles that end up at the same place and they're both high wire acts. It's going to be a very entertaining game. I have no idea who's going to win. I don't even think I know. I don't even think I have a favorite, even though your Catholics undefeated, I don't feel strong about them as a, as a, as a, you know, I don't see them as like the clear cut favorite to win double A. I swear to gosh, I think the winner of, I think they're going to beat Susquehanna, right? They're going to beat Susquehanna. End of story. I'll just say that. I'll be done with that. I, I think it's a 50 50 game. The winner of Columbia Upper Dolphin, the, the survivor of that high wire act, they're going to give your Catholic a full snootful. Mm-hmm. And, and I think that's a toss up game as well. Interesting. Well, I guess we'll, we'll wait and see a little bit, uh, talk a little bit more about that, uh, that classification next week uh, when we come back. Andy, let's do one more game. This one doesn't happen. Yep, until let's next get week. out. Yep. But I'm, I'm, I'm still curious, you know, still high up and down these last few weeks. 
Um, yep. What's your, your thought on this game? It happens November 12th for the, the single A championship. Number two, DeLone Catholic versus number one, Steel High. Remember I said last week when we were um, doing the preview, I said Steel High doesn't have to beat Boiling Springs to move the needle forward. They didn't. Like Boiling Springs hit a two-pointer late. The game was a, a back and forth. It was a 50-50 game all the way. That is a great sign for Steel High because there's a lot of a lot of Boiling Springs and what they do and how they do it. In DeLone Catholic, Boiling Springs uh, prepared Steel High for that next level. Steel High did its own work, right? They came back. They got punched. They climbed off the deck. All the signs and the right indicators. They didn't have to win the game to do it. They are a clear-cut favorite to win that game. Okay. Andy, we'll be back next week to uh, go through the bracket again, talk a little bit about last week's games, see a little bit how, how your, your prognosis are, are shaking out a little bit. Um, <laughs> yes. You know, hold, hold, you got to hold you accountable and see how, how we're doing. Um, but that's yeah. it for this edition of our bracket breakdown. Get out to see some of these games or others on the slate, support your local teams, and check us out at fourthdownmagazine.com for all of our weekly content. Andy, thank you and see ya. See ya.